Now for this last part then we're told that the particle at B is now replaced by a new particle of mass big M here. So I've drawn in the weight here of that particle mg newtons. And we're also told that the string will break if the tension exceeds 2 mg root 13. And so if the string doesn't break, we've got to show that big M is less than or equal to 5 over 2 multiplied by small m. So if it doesn't break, that tension must be less than or equal to 2 mg root 13. So to solve something like this to prove this result, what we need to do is again take moments about A because it will not include the force on this hinge here, R newtons. And if we take moments about A, get an equation, we can say or rearrange it for the tension T and then say that that tension T has to be less than or equal to this value here. And if we rearrange that inequality, we should find that we end up with m being less than or equal to 5 over 2m. So, OK, that's an overview then of the method that we're going to use for this problem. So, as usual, if you'd like to have a go, just pause the video and I'll run through how to solve it if you're still stuck. OK, welcome back if you had a go. So, let's see how you got on. Well, we're going to take moments then about A. So if we take moments about A, as we did before, we had anti-clockwise as positive. It's up to you though, it doesn't matter if you take clockwise, it will work out exactly the same. Just be consistent though with your directions. So taking moments about A then, remember if we take T first of all, we've got T cos theta, that's this component here, perpendicular to the plane. So T cos theta multiplied by the distance to A, which is going to be 3A. So we've got that times 3A. And then minus, we'll take the moment of the weight of the particle at B, it's going to be minus mg times that distance back to A, which is 4A. And then minus the moment of the weight of the rod, so that's going to be mg times 2a. It'll be minus because it's in the opposite sense to what we've got here, minus mg times 2a. And this is the resultant moment. We know it's an equilibrium, so it's going to equal zero. Now what we could do is at this stage divide through by a, it's in every term, so that just reduces that down. So if we tidy this up, we've got t times 3, which is 3t, times the cosine of theta. Cosine of theta, remember, is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's going to be 2 over the square root of 13. And if we add these two terms to both sides, we'll end up with equaling 4mg, that's big M, 4 big MG, plus 2mg, and that's a small m there. Now you could divide through by 2, it's in each term, that will thin this out a little, so we've got that. And what else could we do? Well, I think we could times both sides by root 13 and divide by 3 and that will give us t. So therefore we have t equals root 13 over 3 multiplied by what we have on the right here. 2 big M G plus M G there. Okay little M G. Now we know that this quantity okay has to be less than or equal to 2mg root 13. So we know that therefore if we just put root 13 over 3, we'll copy this all out again to big mg plus little mg, that has got to be less than or equal to 2mg root 13. Now 
there's a root 13 in each of these two terms so we can cancel that out okay and so if we multiply it now through by the 3 it leaves us with 2mg big M there plus the little m g is less than or equal to 6mg if we times this by 3 take mg from both sides and that leaves you with 2 big M G is less than or equal to 6 mg minus an mg so that's 5 mg again the g's cancel here there's a lot of cancelling isn't there between all the terms I suppose you could leave it to the very end but might as well do that at these stages I think but we're there now because if we divide both sides by 2 you end up with m being less than or equal to 5 over 2 m the result we had to show all right so i hope that's given you some idea then how to go about that all right